Hi, I'm Laura and I'm here at Cats Protection in Hazelmere and today I'm here with this lovely friendly boy Socks and his very small little brother Tigger, little Tabby who's um, it's sitting in the corner here. Very sweet cat as well but not quite as confident. Today I've got a poem for you and it comes from T.S. Eliot's Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats and these are some poems that T.S. Eliot wrote um, about cats and they were made into a musical called Cats by Andrew Lloyd Webber. Um, but today I've got a poem for you called The Naming of Cats. The naming of cats is a difficult matter. It isn't just one of your holiday games. You may think at first I'm as mad as a hatter when I tell you a cat must have three different names. First of all there's the name that the family use daily such as Peter, Augustus, Alonzo or James such as Victor, or Jonathan, George, or Bill Bailey. All of them sensible, everyday names. But I tell you, a cat needs a name that's particular, a name that's peculiar and more dignified, else how can he keep up his towel perpendicular, or spread out his whiskers, or cherish his pride? Of names of this kind, I can give you a quorum, such as Munkerstrap, Quaxo, or Caricapat, such as Bombi Lorena or Ash Jelly Lorum, names that never belong to more than one cat. But above and beyond, there's still one name left over, and that is the name that you never will guess. The name that no human research can discover, but the cat himself knows and will never confess. When you notice a cat in profound meditation, the reason I tell you is always the same. His mind is engaged in a rapt contemplation of the thought, of the thought, of the thought of his name, his ineffable, effable, effing ineffable, deep and inscrutable, singular name. I hope you enjoyed that poem. I've got my next book ready and I look forward to bringing it to you soon. Bye for now.